Kerbal Space Program, at its core, is a simple enough game. You can pretty much just throw down some fuel tanks, slap on an engine, and launch wherever you want to go. Today, though, I want to make things much more complicated than they need to be and see just how high it can go without using any engines at all. Now, in addition, there's another thing I want to ban, and that's decoupler stacks. Now, what I'm talking about is something like this, and the reason I don't want to go with it is that there is a little bit of hackery in order to make it work, and I had a funnier idea instead that I wanted to see if it had any merit. So, loading up into the vehicle assembly building, you can see the first thing I did was put down a structural piece, and I put down a motor on that. And after supporting it with some launch clamps, the next thing I did was put a decoupler right on the motor, and I'm putting a seat on that decoupler. The first big idea I had was to see how fast I could spin up a Kerbal and launch them away from this device. Trying this out here, my first test wasn't too bad at all, and to try getting the Kerbal up to a higher speed, you can see that the next thing I did was added on an arm to increase the distance the Kerbal is from the motor. Now, trying this out at first here, you can see that as the Kerbal spun up, it ended up getting launched away, but it actually got launched away prematurely. It seems like those seats can't hold onto the Kerbals at really high forces, so I switched here instead to use a command pod, and trying this out, it was a much better launch. Now we were getting much further away from the launch pad, and things were looking pretty good. Now the next thing I wanted to try to do though was spin this up even faster, but that's where I ran into a problem. The thing is, the motor is already spinning as fast as it can, and even if I try stacking more motors on top of each other, it doesn't get me up to a higher speed. So what I thought about doing next is instead of just stacking the motors on top of each other, what I could try to do was add two motors on the ends of these arms and use a couple of propeller blades to spin up this entire thing. Before that though, I just wanted to announce that my synthesizer project Mixie Synth will be launching on Kickstarter on Friday. So if you want to jump on the best reward tiers, make sure to follow the project with the link down below. And while you're down there, I also have some videos detailed telling it on my second channel. I was hoping I could get up to a higher speed this way, but it seems like these propellers still didn't want to go all that fast, and I wasn't really getting anywhere. So I tried using smaller motors to cut down on the weight, and while this did seem to help, the blades were also really badly glitching out, and I could tell that this was swinging around way too much. So I went back to my previous method of just trying to use longer arms, but with this design, there's still a max speed I can get up to, and while it did perform quite a bit better, I was gonna get speed capped eventually, so this wasn't gonna get me as high as I wanted to go. Now you can see this pretty clearly in my next test here, and I was getting up to a much lower speed, and overall, while I did get 1400 meters in the air, in order to do better, I was gonna need a different approach. So next, what I wanted to try doing was adding a decoupler on the inside of the arm, and you can see that I'm adding another one on the outside of this arm as well. Now if I move the command pod over to where the motor motor is, you can see that I'm adding in a second arm and I'm angling it up slightly to meet up with that first one. The plan with this was to make a trebuchet-like device so I could launch away the command pod the last second and hopefully work around that maximum speed that the game seems to have set. Now in order to do this though, you can see that I'm using some docking ports and this is to sort of get around the fact that in order to connect up the arm correctly, I needed to connect both near where the motor is and on the outside of the arm. This sort of double connect isn't really built into the game, but I did manage to make it work with the docking ports here, and in this test, while it didn't launch correctly, you can see that I was able to sling around the command pod, and a little bit later, I was able to release it. Now, this is good news, but in order to make it all disconnect properly, what I needed to do here was add on a controller, and this will precisely release the docking port and the decoupler at the right time to throw the command pod as far as possible. And trying this out here, in my first test, it was wasn't doing too bad, but it also wasn't doing too much better than before. There really does seem to be some maximum speed you can get things up to just by spinning in this game, and that's gonna put a serious damper on what I'm able to do here. Now as a last ditch effort though, I tried extending out the arm, and I wanted to see if I'd get a little bit more improvement. I was also thinking that since the command pod was much closer to the motor, getting a larger swing on it might let me get up to a way higher speed than I should be able to. When I was testing this out though, it really 
seemed like the game did not like this approach, and I knew I was going to need to try something else. After seeing this though, I realized that there was really no reason for me to use these structural pieces specifically to build up the arm, and you can see that next, I tried using some hydraulics instead. The advantage to these is that they're quite a bit lighter, and they also go a little bit further, so I was hoping this would let me get up to a much higher speed before releasing the capsule. They did seem to be going a bit faster, but they also really liked to bend, which definitely wasn't good for me. Because of that bending, it was kind of difficult to time when to release this, and more often than not, I got a test like this where the Kerbal only got knocked into the air a little bit. Now, I was remembering back to before when I had those propellers on the spin launcher, I wanted to see if I could use that to launch me really fast. So I tried recreating that glitch here, but you can see that I'm using a bunch of these structural pieces which have a little bit more mass and should move around a bit more. Trying this out, I did manage to make it glitch around, which was a good sign, and I wanted to see if I made the arms even longer if I could get this to work. Now trying this out, it was still glitchy, but it seemed like I made them a little bit too long to be useful. Now eventually, I did put the capsule on the end of one of these arms, and I got it to launch into the air, but it was very difficult to get this to work, and it also didn't really go all that high. And while I was looking around for different parts to maybe help out with this glitchiness, I stumbled across the fireworks launcher, and I thought this might be perfect. So I grabbed a donut fuel tank, I put a seat on it, and you can see them stacking a bunch of these fireworks launchers around the edge. Now, once I got any of these in place here, I tried it on the ground, and I could tell that it was definitely launching me into the air. It was also very glitchy as I did this, and the other problem is I only have eight shots to launch, so once I'm out, there's no more thrust I can produce. Now, eventually though, I did find a fireworks launcher with a few more shots, but it's a lot heavier, and you can see here, I ran out of shots when I only got to about 200 meters. Firing off these shots was definitely a little bit laggy here, and after trying this, I realized the better approach was actually just to stick with the eight firework variant, and that got me the most thrust. The issue is though, I didn't really get all that high, and I was gonna need a lot more stages if I wanted to go anywhere. The problem was though, I was so heavy with all these stages, the first couple weren't really generating any thrust, and it was also so laggy it ended up crashing my game. So as a proof of concept, I wanted to go into space and see how much energy this really had, and at least when I was trying this out in orbit, it wasn't terrible. I definitely gained a couple hundred meters per second, but the problem still remains that in the atmosphere, there was just too much drag to really get anywhere with this, and I realized that this would be a good second stage, but I still needed something to get me as high as I could right out of the gate. So still on the lookout for very ridiculous solutions, I ended up going back to this extending rod that I was using before, and you can see that I put a large chain of them down. And once I got all these in place, I tried it out here, and it wasn't too bad. I was getting up to around 60 meters per second, but that was about all I got before it was just too unstable to use. So again, I still needed a way to get me high off the ground, and I thought that maybe instead of just trying to launch myself as fast as possible right out of the gate, I could have a bit of a slower approach. Now you can see here I'm using a couple of motors again, and this time I just wanted to build a helicopter. Now I wasn't sure how high I was going to go, but really all I needed was to get high enough to get out of the thickest parts of the atmosphere, and that should let my fireworks work a lot more efficiently. So after getting down some of the propellers as well, I tried adding some batteries, and trying this out didn't exactly work great. Now eventually I was able to get it off the ground, but the constant spinning made stability control really difficult here, and I seemed to always crash into the ground. So I had to go back and change the direction of one of the motors, and after adding on some fins for a little bit more stability as well, I tried I tried launching off into the air here, and immediately it did seem to be working. It was a little slow though, so to increase the speed, I increased the pitch of the blades, and this should make it a lot more aggressive. Now this did seem to work here, and you can see that now I'm getting almost 100 meters per second off of this. So clearly it was working, but it was also losing speed pretty quickly here, and as it got higher and higher, I just kept bleeding off more and more. And especially here around 12,000 feet, I was losing so so much speed that eventually it seemed like I almost lost grip and I ended up falling back down. Now 
honestly, I wasn't expecting to get this high just using propellers, and even though I lost all my speed at the top, again, all I needed was to get out of the thick parts of the atmosphere for those fireworks to work. So next, while I would be losing a bit of speed, I decreased the pitch of the propellers, and this should make them perform a lot better in the thinner parts of the atmosphere. Doing this though did have some other consequences, and one of them is that since I'm moving slower, it's going to take a lot longer to get as high as I need, which means I need more batteries. In fact, here, now at around 11,000 feet, I nearly ran out of electric charge, and just because I was interested to see how high I could go, I decided to turn on cheats for this test. Now already, you can see that I got a lot higher than before, but again, I kind of just ran out of traction and there was nothing else I could do. But since this idea did look pretty good, I decided to throw in my fireworks here, which were going to add a little bit of weight, but to counteract that, what I also decided to do was add some decouplers between every few chunks of batteries, and this would let me drop off a bit of weight and hopefully save some power as I'm going up. And again, it seemed fine off the launch pad, and fortunately, as it went up higher, it still seemed to maintain stability. I could still tell I was eating through a lot of battery though, and once it got nearly empty, I decided to abandon everything and try launching those fireworks to get one last boost to my maximum height. And I could see here I did gain a few extra thousand meters off those fireworks, which was a huge boost, but I wanted to see if I could get even higher on just the motors before I had to use them. So one big improvement I saw was to switch over to using these helicopter blades instead of those fins. The thing about these is that they have a much shallower attack angle, but it doesn't seem to compromise my speed too much and I'm still able to get up pretty high. This was evidenced by the fact that I managed to get up to 20,000 meters before I had to launch off those fireworks. Now unfortunately though, when I did that, I forgot that I have to angle myself slightly and slammed right back into the propellers, but trying this out again, I angled myself ever so slightly and this did seem to work pretty well. At this point though, I was also still cheating by having having free electricity, and I was going to need way more batteries in order to get up to that maximum height. Adding these on though caused some minor stability problems, and I could see that there was quite a bit of wobbling now. So to hopefully help with this, I added on some stability modules, and I also switched out the small batteries for these larger ones, which should make the whole thing a lot shorter. Now with these helicopter blades, I also had another idea. One thing I noticed is that they have an option to deploy, which changes their angle slightly. Now the advantage to this is that I could use a high pitch angle when I'm taking off the launch pad, and this would let me get better battery efficiency, but when I'm really high up, I can drop that angle more and hopefully get a little bit more traction to get as high as possible. Now I had to use a controller to bind all of these propeller blades, and at least on the launch pad, it was looking pretty good. Now eventually, I got all the way up to my max height in the air, and I wanted to try deploying those blades to see if it would help. One thing I noticed though, is that as soon as they dropped down, my speed immediately cut really, really slow, and while I was at least still gaining some height, it was a lot slower than before, and I was still losing it pretty quickly. At the very least though, I was able to set my max height at that point with this test, which I was pretty happy about. And I also noticed, as I was getting higher and higher, it seemed like it was getting a lot laggier. Now at some point, it almost became totally unplayable, here. Now looking back though, I did add on a bunch of these firework launchers, and I was kind of worried that once I got over a certain height, they were starting to vibrate slightly, which was causing some lag. So I had to trim down a little bit on these, and this did seem to fix the problem. This wasn't great, because it will mean I have a lot less thrust once I get all the way up in the air, but at the very least, I didn't have to cut off too many of these, so I was hoping I could still get a decent boost up there. But I had really something interesting. Starting out with the launch pad, in order to get the motors to spin up, what I needed to do was use full power. This isn't always true though, and the higher I go, the less power I need in order to hit the maximum speed. Now this is important because the less power I'm sending to the motors, the less power they'll use, and this saves me a ton of battery life. Now you can already see with this approach, I was able to shave off a ton of batteries 
and still get up to the same height I was before. It was a lot more annoying to fly this way though, because I did have to constantly test to see if I was able to pull down the motor power, but since it was working, I decided to stick with it here, and you can see me going up for a first test. And starting out, it did seem to be working pretty well, although when I hit my max height, the Kerbal for some reason ejected, and I also didn't have great control over those fireworks, and half of them launched me right back into the ground. So I pulled the Kerbal a little further away from everything just to keep it safe, and I decided to try this again. This time, I still got up to a little over 20,000 meters, and I was able to launch off those fireworks, and I was able to get both sets off, and got up to 22,000 meters. Now, while I was still pretty far away from getting to space, this was still pretty incredible considering it had no engines to use at all. But guys, again, if you're interested in my project, make sure to check out the link down below. And of course, if you have any questions or comments, make sure to leave those down below as well. But otherwise, till next time.